Go ahead, Mr. It's, it's a pleasure being here today with, with everyone. Uh, <clears throat> a number of years ago, I, I know many have come from the Harvard conference, which was held over the weekend, but I spoke on uh, product development um, back, it was actually back in 2000. And it, at that point, there were some uh, people in the audience that were, uh, were actually the chairman of, the, of uh, Guidance Financial Group who was founding the company. And his strategy then, uh, which he recruited me, because uh, I had a background in product development, I was, uh, he, he was going to create a company here in, uh, in the United States, actually, um, that was, was going to be a, a retail uh, company that was going to be an integrated financial services company with home finance as being one of the, the anchor uh, offerings. Um, the home finance would, would create the uh, contracts, which would then, the, those property interests would be securitized, put into uh, mutual funds, which would be distributed to investors who otherwise didn't have that type of asset class. My area was going to be the, 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 uh, the funds in general, uh, mutual funds. Um, we had a broker dealer, a registered investment advisor. Uh, alhamdulillah, the, uh, the home finance company has done, has done very well. Uh, for many reasons, the, um, uh, some of the other products have taken longer to develop. But right now, uh, this is where I'm getting to my point, uh, I've been charged with product development of retail, uh, retail products. And that's really what, what we're talking about here. And the, the things that are on my agenda and the things that are I'm being evaluated against and being compensated for developing uh, deposits, uh, auto financing. Uh, the, actually, they have a priority in, in which ones that come out first, but insurance, TACAFL, we're going to be talking about that uh, in other sections of the uh, program, um, and then perhaps equity funds. But um, you know, we, we have about 5,000 customers that we serve today. We have a well-known brand in the United States. We have structuring expertise. Um, the, the things that I'm really uh, challenged with, I guess, is, and we're talking about challenges, uh, I'm to meet, you know, I, I see a couple of major challenges uh, in, in launching these. Uh, one is in the regulatory front, uh, various of uh, these different assets uh, or different products have different regulatory hurdles that we need to overcome. Uh, but regulatory is certainly, um, uh, one of the challenges, uh, resources, both from financial and human resources, in, in getting um, these Islamic products up and running in a, at a wide, you know, you, you have to have a critical mass in the retail in order for it to make sense. So that's also one of the challenges. Um, what I think is the main thing, and merely the main point of what I want to say is that I think it's important to have committed strategic partners in developing products, uh, because certainly, uh, a company such as the one I'm with, and I think ma ma many other companies, really can't do it alone. So it's it's a matter of, of me going to um, people who have expertise, say in the Takafel area, in the insurance area, and saying, well, Guidance Financial Group is not going to develop its own insurance company, but it wants to serve its customers' base in offering uh, insurance, property insurance for the homes that we're financing or life insurance, auto insurance. Uh, so, so it's developing strategic partners who have a desire to serve this marketplace uh, and, and who we can work with to, um, to, to make the, the products available in the market. So th th when we talk about opportunities, I think the opportunities are, are certainly um, are, are there. I mean, we've kind of proved that in the home finance area. Uh, I think that though the challenges are the regulatory committed strategic, strategic partners and resources. My spiel. <clears throat> Salam alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in uh, addressing the retail market, uh, there's uh, some skepticism among not just uh, non Muslims, but also Muslims as to whether or not uh, Islamic finance is uh, meaningful or important. Uh, to their life, to their uh, practice of their faith. Uh, it's not the case that every Muslim believes that Islamic finance is important and necessary. Uh, I'm Catholic. I'm head of the largest U.S. banking entity engaged in Islamic finance. Tom's company is, is bigger. They're focused on just residential uh, finances. Uh, but uh, I, 
I've gained to learn a lot from scholars such as uh, Sheikh Nizam and uh, Sheikh uh, Yusuf Di Lorenzo uh, and others, and uh, been at many of these conferences over the years. And uh, I'd share with you first the probably the best analogy I've ever heard as to you know what's the basis for Islamic uh, finance. Uh, and I would say this that you know if. Um, if you have a cheeseburger and the cheeseburger is uh, halal, Arabic term for kosher, some of you may be more familiar with kosher, you know, halal, but, uh, and you have a cheeseburger which is non-halal or haram or non-kosher, they look the same, they taste the same, but uh, they're made in a very different way. So it's the process to which the cheeseburger is manufactured, which is all important. And if you think about uh, that, you understand that although the Islamic contract might be the same amount of payment to purchase your house over 30 years, or to purchase your car, or uh, et cetera, uh, in reality, the process of getting there is, is very different. The contracts are different. The responsibilities are different. The contractual terms are different. The risks for all the parties are different from conventional finance. So there really is a difference. It's not just a semantic difference. And again, I'm speaking here as a Catholic and not an expert, OK? Uh, the second thought I'd like to uh, talk to you about is uh, the fact that it's taken many, many, many years for the leaders in the United States to reach a uh, critical mass and break even point. So, for example, uh, the Amana Mutual Fund, the board of which was at our bank uh, last week for their quarterly trustees meeting is uh, now $2.75 billion in assets, uh, alhamdulillah. And I can tell you, however, that it took them 14 years to reach break even. And the portfolio manager, uh, Nick Kaiser, shared with me a story about how many years he didn't take a salary and how many years he made $40,000 a year salary. So it was uh, uh, very much for him missionary work, although I must add uh, also that he's an Episcopalian, not Muslim. Uh, guidance, uh, Tom's company, uh, I think it's no secret, you know, they've uh, spent many years to reach uh, break even point 10, I, I believe. Uh, and in my own uh, bank's case, uh, we started uh, our journey nine months after 9 11, and uh, just recently have reached the point of meaningful profitability, so eight years in our case. So this is not a, uh, a business in the United States, at least, uh, get rich quick and uh, uh, everything works out wonderfully. It takes uh, tremendous uh, patient capital, patience, and uh, perseverance. And I might add, I'm not mentioning the many companies that have come and gone, I mean, you know, failed. Uh, uh, so we're we're the the survivors of the of the young starters in this business. Today, my bank has uh, the only 100% Sharia uh, uh, managed and operated banking subsidiary of a bank in the United States. We have 2,500 customers. Our current product set includes uh, Madaraba uh, insured bank deposits. You know, so in the United States, we have the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC. So our deposits are insured by the FDIC uh, and are profit sharing, not interest uh, based. Uh, those deposits are invested into homes and uh, commercial buildings, uh, which are EJARA contracts. Uh, and we also offer not just the EJARA contracts, um, for homes and uh, for commercial buildings, but also for homes. We also offer as a Waco or agent for Freddie Mac, the large US government sponsored enterprise, which is effectively bankrupt, but God bless the United States Congress. They decided to spend hundreds of billions of dollars to keep them afloat. Uh, so they have purchased from us uh, 
Madaraba, I'm sorry, Marabaha contracts 